Hey guys, welcome back. This is part four of our Tremec installation. And if you missed it, we started here. We had to put, uh, figure out our bell housing alignment, which was a pain. Trying to figure out how to get the alignment pins out of the block, which is a, another royal pain. And uh, I hope you learned something there. So we're gonna continue the trend here because I don't know what I'm doing. I've never done this before. If it's your first time here, you know, you should probably subscribe to watch this chaos unfold. So today we get to test fit this bad boy into where the old transmission is. And after I walk through the, these little parts, I'll show you the size difference. It's actually kind of scary. Now this will work for almost all GM cars, uh, mid 60s, late 60s, and you can actually apply this principle to any Tremec install. So I hope you guys take some things away from this, and that's what we're here for, is a learning experience. Now the kit actually comes with everything you need. I got this from Silver Sport Transmission. Uh, it comes with, I actually got the bell housing, as you guys noticed, so it had a, so I have an inspection uh, plate. But the neat thing that it comes with is sheet metal, assuming you have to cut up your tunnel. Uh, and the other neat thing that comes with it is an actual diagram. Should you need to cut your tunnel, you can use this template. That's pretty cool. Now... Those of you, I might have some, some bad news for those of you with automatic cars that are converting to manual. Pre mentally prepare yourself to do a lot of work on your tunnel because your tunnels are smaller for an automatic transmission. A manual transmission tunnel is wider because it has to accommodate all the shift linkages. That's why I'm hoping this will fit better because the my GTO is a manual car and Hopefully we luck out, but knowing my luck, we're going to have to do some modifications, which is fine. The other things it comes with is uh, the transmission isolator mount on the transmission for your uh, the rear brace, uh, a new stick for the stick shift, a new ball, because after all, I'm going from four to five, I need a number five on here, a speedometer cable and all the mounting hardware, new pilot bearing, uh, and a boot. This boot is actually for the hydraulic uh, cylinder. So here's our hydraulic slave cylinder for our hydraulic clutch. Remember a couple episodes ago we put in the master cylinder? This is the slave cylinder. And before we get going, I'm going to show you the size difference and see the, show you the challenge we have to work with. All right, guys, here's the size difference. Check it out. My little virtual tour. You can see, you can see the, the tail end is a good two and a half inches longer. The width isn't so bad, but you can tell the height. Right in this region is probably going to be where we need to modify the tunnel, if at all. Uh, the big difference is uh, newer transmissions have a 28 spline versus the old 12 spline. So I couldn't use the same clutch, but I can use the same pressure plate and flywheel. And so that's what we have to contend with. And I'm debating taking this assembly off before we try and throw it in the car. Uh, so I'm going to take some measurements and make that determination. But as you can see, there's a pretty drastic difference in the size. And we have to prepare for that. Alright guys, so I decided I am going to remove this assembly because I am going to manhandle this and put it in the car and I don't want anything to hold me up because this is heavier than the other transmission which I pulled out by myself and I put in by myself so this should be fun or it could be a complete disaster and you guys can laugh at me so not a big deal either way now the first thing we have to do when you get your new Tremec is we have to make sure it shifts because apparently 
when this shipped to us, um, there is a propensity for it to misalign itself internally, I guess, and won't let you shift it. So I'm going to go ahead and attach our shifter to get some leverage at least. And before we actually shift it, we need to turn the input shaft. We want the out. We want to see the output shaft turn, but there's a rubber gasket in here. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that out. And this is actually a good thing to use uh, when we put it in the car after we fill it with oil, because this will prevent oil from coming out. So don't throw this away. So there's our, there's our little boot, so we can reuse this. Let's see if we can get some shifting going on. So there's first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear, I can barely turn, but that makes sense. The gear ratio is at 0.64. And then reverse is back down to the awesome. So we're in business. The transmission works. So I can go ahead and take this off. All right. Next thing to do here is to take off these uh, bolts that hold on to the shifter. If you're doing this at home, I recommend um, taking a picture of it because then you know how to put it back together. <laughs> Luckily, I have it on video. Oh yeah, see there's a ball in there. It's pretty neat. It's like a, it's like a split nut almost on here. This is like a Delrin. We'll take this cover off. Now we can get at these bolts. Oh, that was pretty easy. Nice. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back on just so we don't lose it. And I will meet you guys under the car. Because I think the next step is to heave this thing in there. Okay team, here's the plan of attack. So here's our mounting surface. And the engine, by the way, is tilting down. And if you're doing this and your engine's all built, be very careful about how much this is at an angle because if your distributor is installed it will hit the firewall if this comes down too far so this is tilted down and over on this end we have our transmission brace right here and what my plan is is to put the tail this is the, the tail shaft up on the transmission brace this is lying down on its side, so this will be pointed down. And I'll put that up first, up here, and try and get our business end to fit in that hole. Now, also keep in mind, I don't have my flywheel, I don't have my clutch plate, I don't have my pressure plate. It's just the pilot bearing in there, so we don't have to worry about getting it through the clutch disc. So to help slide it up on there, I'm going to put a piece of cardboard. So thank you for your order, whatever you ordered recently. Um, so we're going to put it right here. So my theory is I can put the tail shaft on. This will help slide it. I don't really care about the paint. I'm just looking forward to uh, help move it along. And uh, I'm sure I'll be swearing a lot and grunting 
and this is probably not going to work because this thing is heavy. So here we go. You guys can laugh at me. All right, guys. So this is um, going to be real fast. I'm thinking it's going to be ugly. Wish me luck. Stuck on something. I surprisingly got it up there okay, but this edge is actually hitting. Um, the tunnel. So how do we lower that? Hmm. Alright guys, plan B. Took the cross member out. Alright guys, I'm gonna try this again. My last shot. This time I'm gonna put the the uh, input shaft in first and see if I can get it up that way. Put a couple bolts in and then support the rear. So I got it supported underneath the uh, bell housing here. And uh, hopefully I don't break my back. Oh, that didn't work. Oh man, that thing is heavy. My arms are not big enough to put that thing in by myself. I can do a Muncie, but dang, that thing's heavy and bulky. So I'm gonna take a few days off and think about it. I'll come up with a solution. It'll probably have something to do with hydraulics. <laughs> oh man, difficult. So, hey, a learning process for everyone mostly me so you're gonna see the update in like a half a second here so I'll be right back hey I'm back uh, so the day after that last little clip I'm pretty sure I now have three herniated discs topped off with a hernia <laughs> well I'm just old I, I don't know so I did mention that we're probably gonna need some hydraulic help and I went on Amazon, had to wait a week, but I think we got it. Check this out. It's a motorcycle lift. So this actually raises um, to about 34 inches and it's on wheels so we can get it into alignment and should help out dramatically and save my back from future injury. Uh, the other thing I think I need to do is actually remove the exhaust. Uh, I think the, the X pipe was getting in the way of the tail and uh, make it easier on us. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, take some more measurements, but I'll probably see you back in underneath the car. Be right back. Okay, guys. Oh, sorry. I got the exhaust out, and that's why I'm in a new shirt because I was wearing my favorite butler shirt and it got greasy and I'm not happy about it. <laughs> so I lowered the car about four inches from where it was. I added a four by six underneath the transmission. It's on our new favorite jack and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, see if I can get it in position and don't mind my power cord. It actually runs from the trunk over the transmission. It's not really gonna get in the way and we'll go from there.
Hey guys, sorry I didn't film an actual procedure, but what I learned is that the engine needs to be tilted backwards. It was actually level, that's why I couldn't get it in. Once I had it tilted, and I have a little my little shims here, put my little shims in, it slid right in like butter. So I went ahead and put the bolts on, and the upper bolt that comes with the kit, there's a socket head because you can't get a, a wrench on this bolt here, so you have to use the socket head. Uh, the others are standard three-quarter. So now the next step is to figure out if we can get our uh, transmission brace under here. So I'm gonna get to work on that. All right, team, check it out. So I'm almost on the brace, and there's only one spot it's hitting. It's hitting right here. So I can literally just dimple that. We just have to push it in about a half inch or so. But other than that, there's only one other spot. I don't know if you can see my finger right here. We can actually cut that out because this is this is empty space. I can cut that out. That would be cool. And everywhere else looks good. We do have a test for that. We can actually run like a quarter inch rubber hose around the whole transmission or a rope, which I'll probably do later. Um, but right now I gotta take a break for the day and I'll put some temporary uh, shims in here just to load up the transmission and get it off the jack. And I can get a better look at alignment. Nice, very nice. All right guys, so I took the transmission out and I think we're gonna do it a few times, so be patient. But I took my silver Sharpie and I marked areas that we need to dimple so this area here we need to push in um, probably a half inch and then this area here it's tough to see because I didn't clean the area before I used the sharpie but this, this area you got to push in um, this area I'm going to cut because we have some uh, overlapping material I'm going to cut it and then try to dimple it Probably have to shave the screw off and be making a lot of noise. And then there's another area right here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hammer that out. So speaking of hammers and tools, this is what we're working with today. So we have a whole bunch of hammers for metal working from Eastwood. If you guys don't know the Eastwood name, they really cost effective tools, including this guy. He's not cost effective though. This is like $300 air saw it's really loud so i'll be using ear protection and my cutoff wheel on a die grinder to get those screws out so i'm just gonna record it all fast forward through most of it but you can see the damage and i'll show you the summary uh when i'm done banging let's get to work nice trim <clears throat> All right guys, here's test fit number two. And we're about a quarter inch short. We still have to go about a quarter inch higher. So I'm gonna get a bigger mallet and see if we can get that to go deeper. On the piece that we cut out in the front, that worked out really well, but we still have to get a little bit of relief right here. So I'm gonna mark that with a Sharpie and uh, get back to banging. So when I come back, China will be out again and do some further mods. All right, guys. Well, I'm a little disappointed. I have to tell you, I can't move that metal anymore with a hammer. I got a bigger hammer. It didn't really move. So next step is getting to cutting. And that means cutting through the floorboard. I have to take the interior apart to get to it. Should be another adventure, but at least you know what it takes to do this at home. And I hope you liked it. I hope you're entertained. I hope you learned something. So subscribe for the next episode because we'll tear apart the interior, do some cutting. I don't think I'm going to do welding, um, but you never know. We'll see. 
So until next time, you know the drill. Build them fast and drive them faster. See ya. Ah!